we, we, we're facing a change, a lot of changes from Washington uh, in social activity and politics and so on down the line. This is a change in world. No doubt about that. Now, that fact I don't think any would deny, though I have heard it denied, an un a change in the world, but I submit we have an unchanging church in a, in a changing world. An unchanging church in a changing world. Now, in what ways is the church unchanging? God have mercy if we become relevant. Twenty-five years ago, among Baptists, they would say a, a terminology that I just used. Relevance say. Everybody was saying relevance say. But the church is unchangeable in some very definite ways that I want to point out to you. Number one, the church is unchangeable in its foundation. It shall always be founded upon truth. And the body of truth is this precious book that I have in my hand. Our foundation remains the same. And I mentioned the word relevant a while ago, a few, a few years back. Uh, they were talking about making the gospel relevant. Church is relevant. We've got to compete. They tried to tell us 25 years ago. We've got to compete. We've got to have youth activities. We've got to have this or the other. No, the church is never called to be relevant. The folly of relevancy will blind and doom and ruin a church. You say, well, we're not reaching the youth. Oh, we're not reaching this segment of the society. Well, I can't find in the Bible where we are commanded to reach any particular segment. Not even the youth. We are commanded in the Scriptures to preach the gospel. And if we can reach young people in the process, amen. If we don't, amen. Right. I'm not to streamline a tabernacle just to reach young people. And I'm not to streamline tabernacle to reach intellectual people. I'm not to streamline tabernacle to reach wealthy people. In fact, I'm not the streamline, period. My foundation is the same. My doctrine is the same. The truth is unchanged. And God forbid that I change or disturb the foundation that's laid down. I want everybody that knows me to know that I'm a fundamentalist. I believe the Bible, all the Bible, every miracle in it. You say, well, you will knock the intellectuals out. Uh, that's uh, beyond my control. I have no power about that. But young people won't come to hear you preach. If you preach the old-fashioned doctrines, they'll buy Shabbat. That's not mine to be concerned about. It's mine to preach the whole counsel of God. Right. Right. I say the church is unchanged at its foundation. We build upon this book. We build upon truth. And the moment you begin to streamline your church to appeal to any one particular group, you're going to. You better appeal to God to stay close to God. Then again, the church is unchangeable and unchanging in its formation. I don't think the church is an accident. I believe the church is in this earth in godly design. And God the decree. The church is unchanged in its formation. God has not changed his plan one bit or changed his mind one bit. You say, well, maybe God will change, change his strategy. That's what some men say. Change our strategy, change our methods, and become relevant. That's what some men say. But I don't think God's ever said that. Do you imagine? That God ever says, Peter, I, want, I need to talk to you. We started a good thing down there at Pentecost and got 3,000 Jews saved and baptized. But Peter, something went wrong. And I just can't quite understand what went wrong. We need to have a seminar and see if we can find out what happened. No, no, my soul. God doesn't have to do that. God knows. 
I say that which has happened has been exactly what God planned. Yes. The church is exactly what God would have it be. Oh, man, change it. We've got a lot of things these days. Somebody said to me, I preach, you need a business manager at Tabernacle. And I said, you're looking at him. Yeah. Right? right? Well, you're a dictator. No, I'm not a dictator. But that's just the way God ordains it, you see. The pastor's overseer. The pastor's overseer. Amen. Uh, and God's never changed his organization. It's still a local church. Simple, autonomous group. Very, very loosely organized, very uh, knit together in a bond of love rather than a coercion of harassment and intimidation. The church remains unchanged in its declaration. And the moment a pastor begins to go down other channels, as far as I'm concerned, that's the death knell of that church. It can never be prospered. Until the pastor stays of the gospel, stays of the gospel, stays of the word of God. I question the wisdom of preaching on Curly this. I question that. But stay with Calvary. Stay with Calvary. Let the world, let the news media take care of that. You stay with Calvary. Stay with the simple gospel. The church remains unchanged in its declaration. Our one message is Christ crucified. God forbid that it be more or less than that. Christ died for our sins. Take your whole lifetime to tell that, and you'll never get it told. Somebody said, Preacher, don't you think the communists might destroy the church? Don't be naive. Jesus said, The gates of hell not stop it. So don't you think modernism will destroy it? Don't be naive. Every time one preacher becomes a modernist, God will save some of you boys and fill them up with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to dampen this thing. Has it occurred to you that there are 10,000 young preachers in America right now studying for the ministry? What an army. 10,000. 